Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Going to dissect the European this morning. And let's go back to the start to the beginning. I, th I think this is really a pretty simple uh, situation that's developing, believe it or not. Uh, and I'll explain why. Okay, so here's that first storm for the weekend. And you can start to see the blocking that develops. This is that tropical system. If you look on my GFS video that I cut a little earlier, it really gets into detail about how all this is playing out. Um, but you can see that Sunday storm goes up into Canada, the block builds, and here's that powerhouse uh, um, disturbance that's coming down in the northern stream. And it dives southeastward and digs. Trough tries to sharpen, still kind of on the broad side, but it tries. And then it lifts uh, northeastward from here. Now, what this literally would say is that, uh, at least from the, in terms of what this printed out, is, and I'm going to switch to a, a map that shows a surface. We, uh, unfortunately, because the European is private and not a government-produced product, uh, we only get uh, these increments in 24 hours, so we can't really see... Um, what goes on in between, um, I can see it because I I uh, subscribe to it, but I'm not allowed to share it with you. So, um, I mean, I can share it verbally, but I can't share the graphics. But anyway, here's that first low, and it, it runs up uh, well to our west. We get a pretty good dosing of rain out of this. This is a pretty powerful storm system, and that's important because that drives the next weather system down. And you can see there's a low up here near Lake Huron with a trailing front. And what's going to happen is that this is all going to weaken. This low weakens out. A new low begins to develop just offshore and then runs out to the northeast. And you can see there's a major storm south of Nova Scotia here by Wednesday evening. Uh, what the European would say is that the development would take place just far enough offshore that it would probably be a miss for much of this area, but we are at day seven here and there's plenty of room for adjustments to the left. So what you want to see, if you are a winter weather lover, you've just seen this, this is what you want to see if you're not a winter weather lover, but I will uh, show you here on the upper air. This trough is accessed like this. You can see it still hasn't swung completely around. You need this to be just as deep. The depth is fine, but what you need it to be is you want it to swing around a little bit faster. And that would allow um, for more development closer to the coastline. So you see how this trough is accessed. Now, this was would be when it's long gone by, by um, Wednesday evening. You want it accessed for a little further to the west wouldn't take much and there's cer it's certainly within the margin of error so the key is to all of this is going to be what kind of a powerhouse system are we dealing with and how far south is it going to be able to dig before the whole trough here starts to swing to the northeast so it leads for um very interesting times ahead certainly and I'm going to just go back to the wider view so we can kind of take a look at what it does beyond this. Because once that lifts out, and the block is still there. So there's another vortex that forms and this just sort of rotates around. And, and, and this is actually a very good loop example of, I'm going to roll it back. If you watch what goes on up here in terms of the block, how it holds everything in place. And there you have it. You see how that vortex really doesn't pull out it just rotates around itself and reforms this is what um, a signature blocking pattern basically looks like uh, over time that block gets incredibly strong across greenland and uh, comes over the top into the arctic so that just pretty well locks this in place uh, the gfs in the longer range uh, kind of gets squirrely i have to tell you quite honestly that model has just become very very um, volatile and I think squirrely is a good word uh, beyond uh, the say the day seven time frame for sure it just simply doesn't seem to know what goes on and you get these ridiculous looks from run to run and you don't know what's right so the Europeans much more consistent I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna focus on this a little bit more as we get closer to the short range but 
this is what we have to deal with, and uh, we will talk more about this later today. I have a Joe Stradamus post up now explaining the um, the GFS in detail, and I'll have a European post up a little later this morning to explain that some more.